In this video we're going to be solving root equations or radical equations. Here's page one, these examples, and then page two, these two examples, page three, these examples here, uh, page four, these examples, and page uh, and, and at the end we're just going to list from our experience we'll list some steps for solving root equations, okay? Okay, so let's start with page one. If I have um, the square root of x equals 5, just can you write down the answer to that? Square root of something is 5, what is the something? In other words, the square root of what gives 5? Square root of what gives 5? Square root of 25, right? So if root x equals 5, x has to be 25, right? Now that's one way of solving it is just to guess it and it's fine for these but once we get to these ones it might be a little bit hard to guess and so a method we have for these is to actually get rid of the square root so how would you get rid of a square root on both sides of an equation so that's what we need to do any idea how you might get rid of a square root on both sides of an equation well what if you uh, to undo a square root you would actually square because if I square that, you see, I get root of x times root of x, which is root of x times x, x squared. And the square root of x squared, of course, is x. So if I square a square root, I get the x on its own. And of course, you need to square both sides. So you get x equals 25. No big deal, you could have figured this one out. But it's going to be useful to square both sides when we get to these examples, right? So just for fun, write down the answers to these two questions here. Root x equals 2, what's x? root of 8x equals 4, what's x in both cases? So please write down the answers to these two. Press pause if you need more time. The root of what gives 2? Square root of what gives 2? Any idea? Square root of... 4 gives 2, doesn't it? Yep. And of course if you squared both sides, you see root of x squared just gives me x and I have x equals 4. So that would work as well, right? How about this one? Can you guess what the answer is? 8 times what and then square rooted ends up being 4. The square root of what gives 4 first of all? Square root of what gives 4? The square root of 16, right? And 8 times what gives 16? 8 times 2? Yep, because 8 times 2 is 16 and root 16 is 4. So the answer would be 2, wouldn't it? Now if you squared both sides, uh, the square undoes the square root. If you want to write it out, that's root 8x times root 8x, Oops, which is square root of, you know, 8x uh, times 8x. You know, which of course is square root of two a uh, double is is eight x, isn't it? So, root, so eight x equals the other side is four squared sixteen, and then just divide by eight on both sides, and we have x is two, right? Anyway, so these guys you mightn't, you know, you could you could guess the answer, but it's a lot easier to just use the uh, procedure. So when we're solving square roots. Um, and we have a root all by itself on one side. To get rid of the root, we square. Squaring will get rid of the square root. Okay? So we square both sides. We're doing the same procedure to both sides. This quantity is squared, this quantity is squared. So if I square a square root, I will get um, that that will undo the square root. So I'll just end up with 3x minus 5 equals and 1 squared is 1 and then I just need to solve the equation, right? So just add 5 to both sides 3x equals 6 divide both sides by 3 and x is 2, right? Now we must always check our answer for these and there will be uh, examples later on where we definitely have to check your answer because they won't always work. 2 is actually a possible answer. We're not sure the answer is 2 yet until we actually check it. And you'll see why later on. Um, this example will work though of course. If I plug 2 in for x, see I'm checking my 2 in for x in the original equation 
and that should equal 1, shouldn't it? 3x minus 5 equals 1. I'll get on the left hand side 6 minus 5, root of 6 minus 5, which is um, which is root of 1 and square root of 1 is 1. So I have 1 on both sides, 1 equals 1, right? And how about this guy? Press pause and solve this one, same way. Press pause, do it yourself, try it, and hey, if you get if you, if you get stuck, you can just watch the video, right? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to press pause, then I'm going to do it, okay? A couple of seconds, one, two, okay, I'm going to do it now. To solve this equation, I first must get rid of the square root. So I need to square that to get rid of the square root. This thing squared will give me the inside, 2x plus 1, or the radicand, okay? If I square the left hand side, I must do the exact same thing to the right hand side. I must square the right hand side. So we get 2x plus 1 equals 36. Okay. And now I just need to solve that equation. Subtract 1, 2x equals 35, divide by 2, x equals 2 into 3 goes once, remainder 1. 2 into 4, 15 goes 7 times, a remainder 1, so 17 and 1 half or 17.5, whichever you want to call it. And um, if I check the answer now, root of 2 times x plus 1 must equal 6. I'll plug in 17.5, okay? So that becomes 2 times 17.5 ends up being 35. So I have root of 35 plus 1, which is square root of 36, which is 6, right? So we have 6 on both sides. Draw a smiley face. You got the right answer, okay? So this is true. X is 17.5. This one was X equals 2. Okay, going on to page 2 now root 8x plus 1 equals 5. What should we do here? We don't have a square root on both sides. Or a we don't have a square root by itself on one side. So what should the first step be? Okay, so um, any idea? Well, I hope you notice that the square root, right, it stops at the x. It does not continue to the 1, right? So this 1 is all by itself. Now wouldn't it be so nice if we just did that, subtracted 1 from both sides? Because if we did that, we ha would have root of 8x equals 4. See that? And now this problem is, is, is a lot, is, is uh, straightforward, because now we have the square root isolated on one side. And I can just go ahead and square that whole side and it'll just get rid of the square root. And of course I need to square this side too, right? So squaring the square root undoes it and I just end up with 8x equals and 4 squared is 16 and then divide by 8 and x is 2, right? And uh, of course that checks out as well because then um, we actually saw this similar one earlier, didn't we? Root of 8 times x, then added to 1, should give 5. If x is 2, I'll plug 2 in here. And now that's root 16 plus 1 should give 5. Root 16 is 4 plus 1 should give 5. I think it does. 5 equals 5, right? So please press pause and do this one by yourself. So it's good to try and you know if you make the mistake that's fine that's a good thing it's a good time to make a mistake cuz you've got the video to check it then right Okay I'll do it now The trick is that the square root stops here it does not continue over the negative 3 You can't you know make this a negative 4 you can't uh just go ahead and square both sides and think everything's going to work out it won't you need the most easiest thing to do is just to isolate this root and just go ahead and add 3 to both sides. Okay? If you do that, 
you get root of x minus 1 is equal to 12. See that? And now we can solve it. So just adding 3 to both sides simplifies the whole thing. And if I want to get rid of this root, I need to square. I need to square both sides. <coughs> so squaring the root leaves me with the inside. And 12 squared is 144. And now I just need to add 1 to both sides and have the answer. Right? 145. And I'll go ahead and check that. Always check your answer in these because they don't always work out. You'll see, see why soon. So it's x parentheses where the x was. Per x mi root of x minus 1, then minus 3 should give 9. If x is 145, I get 145 minus 1 is root 144. Okay, and then I calculate that to get 12. Root 144 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. I think it is. 9 equals 9. Draw a smiley face. That is the correct answer. Okay, x equals 145. Yep. Okay, next up is page 3. So please solve this equation. The square root of x equals negative 3. Go ahead and solve it. See what you get. If you were to guess, what would you come up with? Right? Or if you were to square both sides, what would happen? If I go ahead and square both sides, square undoes the square root, I get x. Negative 3 all squared, you see, is negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, which gives what? Does that give positive 9? Right. Now what happens when you check that? You get root of x should be negative 3. Is root, if I plug 9 in for x, is root 9 equal to negative 3? Or not? I know that negative 3 squared gives positive 9, but the thing about it is root 9, square root of 9, is actually positive 3. Okay, and that's not equal to it. So this is not the right answer. And we need to discard this possible solution. And so we have no solution to this equation. Now the trick is, you see, that root 9, this thing, this symbol here, okay, square root, means give me the positive root. We went over this earlier. The positive root. Okay. So in other words, root 9 equals positive 3, not negative 3. Okay. That was the trick. That th this root is actually positive. So go ahead and figure this one out. Root of x equals negative 2. Write down the answer. Can you guess it? Square root of what will give you negative 2? Can you plug a number in here? to make the square root of it negative 2? I mean, square root of 4 is positive 2, and I can't really think of anything else. The square root of negative 4, what's that? What two numbers multiply, the same numbers multiply to give negative 4? Can you think of any? Negative 2 times itself doesn't give negative 4, it gives positive 4. Right? So negative 2 won't work. Um, negative 2 times positive 2 gives negative 4, but hold on a second. That's not, a, that can't be, a, it has to be the same number, right? So square root of negative 4 is no real number. You can't get the root of a negative. Uh, and so, you know, 4 doesn't work because it's 2. Negative 4 doesn't work because root negative 4 is no real number. So the answer is there's no solution. And you could try and solve it like we did up here and you'd find there's no solution. So if we're doing something like this, because it's a square root equal to a negative, you might be able to write down, hey, there's no solution. But you've got to be careful with that because when we're doing cube roots equal to negatives, 
that's going to be a different story. You'll see that in the next page. Most likely you won't remember and you'll go ahead and square both sides like always, which is fine. As long as you check your answer, you don't have anything to worry about. If you check your answer in all of these root equations, including the cube roots, which we're doing soon, if you make sure you check your answer, then um, you can just go ahead and do all this, the procedures you like. And if your answer works, it works. If it doesn't, then you can just say there's no solution and discard that answer. Okay. So if I square both sides, I get x plus 4 equals... Now, this is negative 5 times negative 5, isn't it? 25. And then subtract 4 from both sides. And I have x equals 21. Now I'm going to check that, though. Always check. Because it's not definitely an answer until it works out. It's a possible answer at the moment. As far as we're concerned, it's a possible answer. If I plug 21 in for x, I'll get root of 21 plus 4 equals negative 5. Plug 21 in there, and on the left I get 21 and 4 is 25. And the root of square root of 25 means please give me the positive root of 25. Not the negative root, the positive root. And the positive root of 25 is positive 5. Is that equal to negative 5? Does the equation check out? No, it doesn't, right? So this one does not check, and so you discard that solution, discard that, throw it away, put it in the trash, whatever you want to say, and just write no solution. And put a box around it or whatever you want to do, and that's your answer. Okay. Now moving on to page four, we're going to look at cube roots. Okay. And these are different again. If you have cube root of x equals negative 2, your brain might say, oh, that has to be no solution because you can't have a root equal to a negative. Well, is that a, is, what do you think? Is a cube root of anything equal to negative 2? Can you think of an answer? You might be able to think of one. And um, let's go through the motions. If I want to get x by itself, how do I undo cube root? To solve this, I would need to cube both sides. Okay, get the and that would give me um, cube root x times cube root x times cube root x which would be the cube root of x times x times x and the cube root of a triple is itself, right? So cube root of x times x times x is just x. Now if I cube the left hand side, I must cube the right hand side. Negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. What does that give? positive 4 times negative 2, right? It gives positive 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, right? Now let's check that guy. Plug negative 8 in for x. What's the cube root of negative 8? Well, that's equal to negative 2, isn't it? Because negative 2 times itself 3 times gives negative 8. So you can get, the cube root can give a negative answer because you're allowed to take a cube root of a negative, okay? So a cube root can be a negative number. A square root cannot. But uh, instead of having to remember what's what, I would suggest just check your answer for all of these and then you'll know. Okay. And also later on we're going to see problems where there's two solutions and one of the solutions works and the other one does not. So it will be more complicated. You'll definitely have to check your answer. Okay. So pr please press pause and do this one. Press pause and do this one. Cube root of x equals negative 3. Well, just for fun, I'm going to solve it by cubing both sides. If I cube a cube root, it undoes that uh, process, right? And I need to cube this side as well, okay? If I cube a cube root, and once again, it'll be cube root of x, cube root of x, cube root of x, which is cube root of x times x times x, which is, of course, x, right? But you can just remember that a cube will undo a cube root. 
and on the right we have negative 3 times itself 3 times. Okay? Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. And if I check that, cube root of negative 27, plug negative 27 in for x, that is indeed negative 3, because negative 3 times itself 3 times obviously gives negative 27, okay? As we found here, right? Okay, how about this guy? Cube root of x plus 4 minus 2 equals 0. Can you get the first step? Write it down and then see if you can guess what the first step might be. What I want you to notice is that the cube root sign ends at the 4. It does not go over the negative 2. Okay, which means we cannot say, you know, 4 minus 2 is 2 or whatever. I mean, this, this is inside a cube root. You cannot add and subtract with that. Um, you can't just, taking a cube of both sides right away is going to be quite messy. And the easiest thing to do is this, add 2 to both sides. If you do that, negative 2 and 2 is 0. Now I have the cube root of x plus 4 equals 2. And uh, I guess what I see in the homework all the time is stuff like this, subtract 4 from both sides. Why can't I do that? That's a mistake. What's wrong with that? This number 4 is not really the number 4 all by itself. The cube, it's been cube rooted and added to added to x and then cube rooted. You can't just subtract it from both sides, you'll just completely destroy the answer and it, your answer won't check out for one thing. So you can try that and see that you're wrong. Um, so what we need to do is cube both sides. And if I cube a cube root, it undoes it. And so I just have the inside. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, right? And then subtract 4 from both sides, and x equals 4. Now, I don't know for sure whether that's the correct answer or not, so I need to check. Or if that even works. So, parentheses plus 4, the cube root of x plus 4, parentheses plus 4, then minus 2 equals 0. Minus 2 equals 0. So I write out the first equation, not the second one or the third one, the very first equation, just to make sure you didn't, just to check whether you made a mistake anywhere. Write out the very first equation, plug in your answer of 4, and calculate this. Now I have to get the cube root of 4 plus 4, which is 8, minus 2, then minus 2, and that should equal 0. Okay? What is the cube root of 8? It is 2, isn't it? And 2 minus 2 equals 0, right? So this is correct. Okay, so we have the correct answer. One solution, x equals 4. Okay? Please press pause now and do this one by yourself. Please notice that the cube root stops at the negative 4. It does not go over plus 8. Okay? Uh, so please do it yourself. And hey, if you make a mistake, that's fine because you can then just watch the video and catch a mistake, right? Okay, I'm going to do it now. I hope you've had a chance to try it. I need to subtract 8 from both sides, first of all. That will leave me with the cube root of y minus 4 is equal to negative 1. To get rid of cube root, I need to cube. And of course, what I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So I'm cubing both sides. Cube, cube in a cube root leaves me with the inside, y minus 4. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times itself 3 times. That gives positive 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. Then I just add 3 to, or add 4 to both sides, and I get y equals 3. And I need to check my answer, make sure I got correct, and make sure that even works at all. Cube root of y minus 4, then add 8, and don't put it underneath the cube root sign, that should equal 7. Plug 3 in for y, plug 3 in for y, see that, in the original equation. And so I have the cube root of negative 3 minus 4. 3 dollars take away 4 dollars. I'm in debt by 1 dollar, negative 1. Plus 8 should equal 7. What is the cube root of negative 1? 
Well, negative 1 times itself. 1, 2, 3 times gives negative 1. So the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So I get negative 1 plus 8 equals 7. And that is true, isn't it? Uh, a debt of $1 plus $8 cash leaves you with $7, right? Okay, so y equals 3 is correct. So, we have had an introduction on solving root equations, and I hope you have found uh, that, first of all, we should isolate the square root, or isolate the square or cube root, so isolate the root, and what I mean by that is um, get root by itself on one side, So please write this out and keep it beside you for uh, reference. And so that's like the first step here was we uh, subtracted 8 from both sides, right? Or added 2 to both sides here. That was the first step. So we isolated the root and then we square or cube both sides. Square or we cube both sides. And remember that um, a square root, uh, root of x, for example, squared, just gives you x. Root uh, cube root of x cubed, for example, would just give you x, right? So the cube cube root square cube gives gives the inside, and a square root uh, square root squared gives the inside, right? And actually, if you're doing a fourth root, it would be uh, to the power, uh, fourth root to the power of four would give the inside and so on, right? And the third step is solve and check possible solutions. Check the possible solutions because we're not sure whether these are really going to work. until we check them and just remind you of um, when we were getting the square root of x plus 4 equals negative 5 remember that ended up being no solution okay so they're not always even if you do the algebra they're not always going to check out so you need to make sure you check at the end okay